G'day guys, welcome to another video. Last week we showed you the Lotus Caravan. This week we're showing you the thing that pulls that caravan around, the mighty F350. So this is our 2020 Ford F350. <laughs> <laughs> This is our 2020 Ford F350, 6.7 litre power stroke turbo diesel. It's the Larry Ultimate package. We're gonna start from the start and work our way through. So up the front, we have the Fab Four Matrix Bar, built in America for the American trucks. Unfortunately, a lot of companies in Australia have stopped making bars for the newer model F trucks, so we've had to import it from America. Sitting in house, of the uh, matrix bar is all the steady light so we've got the 31 and a half inch front light bar and each side we have the cube lights uh, they produce an enormous amount of lights especially coupled with the one up on the roof which we'll get to soon in the bull bar we have the warm winch now unfortunately with this bar it could only be a 12,000 pound winch would I like a 16,000 absolutely but unfortunately that the next bar up isn't quite as good as this one that for looks for my taste so the 12,000 pound it'll do it's got recovery points on it all built in comes with the bar so also sitting on the bar we've got the GME 6.6 DB two-way aerial comes with a shorter one as well so depending where we are and what we're doing I can interchange this out to suit what we're doing at the time obviously if we're going down corrugated roads I don't want it hitting my nice blacked out grill. One of the next mods that we're looking at is changing these lights. So these are all halogen. I want the LED edition. Unfortunately, Ford haven't got them at the moment, so we're just waiting on delivery of them. Tires and rims on this truck. Using the fuel blitz with the gold sort of underlay on it, it's very hard to see. You can only see it in a certain amount of light. So they do look black, but there is a tinge of gold in there to match our caravan and boat. Moving up to the tires, we've gone the Nitto Ridge Grapplers. 37 inch 12 and a half inch wide i wanted the 13 and a half but unfortunately to be legal all around australia this is the maximum size that i can have to make this car 100 percent legal everywhere above that we've got the bushwhacker smooth flares now to, to have these big tires the car has to have these flares so that they don't stick out past the flares so along with the front grille that's been blacked out all of our badges we've had blacked out as well. It's a blackout car, that's why we want to keep the theme going. So the mirrors are stock standard with the Ford. Automatically retract out, automatically retract in. So you don't have to stand out here and pull them like you do with some brands. Indicators on the outside, they've got a beautiful light underneath that lights up the whole ground when, you, when it's night time and you want to step into your car. The top mirror and bottom mirror are just like say your clear views that you can buy for your Land Cruisers and stuff like that. So one of the cool features that I like about the car, it was a non-negotiable, was the, the steps. So instead of having the ones that always stick out, I've got these ones. As soon as you open your door, they fold down. As soon as you close your door, they fold back up. All right, so moving along, we have the AVS weather shields. So if it's a hot day and you're away, you can just crack your window a little bit and nothing actually gets in there. So it's a good idea, especially with a black car, to have these sorts of things. Above that, we've got the Rhino Rack. So that's the uh, backbone platform. And that houses two little steady lights, one on each side, and the 50 inch light bar on the front. That thing honestly throws out a huge amount of light. And it doesn't reflect down too bad on the bonnet. I've had light bars before where they reflect really bad. This one seems to be going okay. So I kept the front of the car reasonably tame. The reason is, this bad boy here. Custom made GCI Traytech aluminium tray, aluminium canopy. So it's a full lift off canopy. So if you want to use this car for a tradies ute, you can get rid of the canopy and use it as a ute. Even better, even the stuff inside, it's all modular. You can pull all that stuff out after the weekend and put your tradie stuff back in there and you can use the canopy for that as well. So let's get stuck into it. I'll open her up and have a look inside. So just before I open her up, I just want to point out something how the factory lines flow into the aftermarket canopy. They've thought about this thing and designed it with perfection. Everything just matches and flows. So let's get it stuck open and have a look. So this one is not your ordinary pull out drawer. It's, it's on slides. So this is full waterproof, full dustproof, full everything. 
This one houses all of our bags, our camelbacks and stuff like that. So when we go on hikes, easy access, grab them, hit the road. Moving to the back, we'll open this next drawer. So again, it's fully waterproof, fully dustproof. This one is all for my boat. So it's a bit of a dirty drawer where I don't want oils and stuff in the inside. This one, this one houses all that so that if anything does happen, it's captured in this one drawer. All right, moving into the driver's side. This thing is a work of art. Have a look at that. Starting up the front, we have the full Enerdrive system. So it's got a 200 amp battery, lithium, powered with a 2000 watt inverter, run by the full Cymarine for Enerdrive package. It's got the DC to DC charger and the Enerdrive solar panel up the top, which we'll give you a sneak view of now. So up here, we've got some power outlets that uh, the inverter runs. So they're all scattered throughout the whole canopy. And wherever we are, we turn that inverter on and we can use 240 volt power, no matter what. Down below is the Evercool fridge slide. So this one can be fridge or freezer. So if we're going away on long trips, we can turn this into a freezer and put all of our meat in here and not filling up our freezer too much in the caravan. Or, perfect for my cold beers. It fits a nice set of, a, a carton of beer perfectly inside and keeps them bloody cool. <laughs> so the box behind it, this one here is a, a full drawer. So it comes out with a stainless steel bench. So if I need to work on anything or do anything, this one here hits the mark. Opening up the drawer, as you can see, it's quite big. I've got a chainsaw in here and I've got a whole bunch of little knickknacks. Um, I'm going to sort it out when I get some more bags, but for now, it houses everything that I need it to house. So up on the roof, we've got these channels that you can, you can bolt stuff anywhere you want. So up here, I'm going to have my fishing rods all flowing down here, hence the reason why I've left this bit open. I want to be able to get to a sufficient spot, grab a rod and reel that's already pre-made, whack it out, go down the water, and cast it and catch a fish. I don't want to be sitting here, especially with kids fishing. If you've ever fished with kids, when you're setting it up, they lose the plot. So the quicker you can do this, the quicker you're out there catching a feed. Moving up, it's the door. So this little piece here, that GCI have kindly put in, this is in case any load inside your canopy moves. If it dents this, you don't see it from the outside. This is a great idea, full stop. Like, I don't want to have to pay for a new door because something has accidentally fallen out in my canopy. So this saves that. Moving on to the LED lights. Full LED, there's some orange, and there's some bright white. Again, you don't want bugs hanging around your canopy. And just to the outside, if you can see that, that is full central locking. So every single drawer on this canopy is hooked up to my central lock. And as soon as I hit that button, the whole car, entire car, canopy, every box, every drawer is 100% locked and safe. So moving down to the rear of the car, I've got, opted for the single jerry can holder. This thing on its own is, is brilliant in design. It's not just your general jerry can. So if you've got a full can of fuel, you obviously don't want someone to steal it. So these little clips are fully lockable. They lock up. That folds down. Bit of a workbench as well, you can rest your beer on there, jerry can on there, it's all about practicality. So moving around to the ladder, I need to unlock the ladder so I've fucked up. <laughs> the ladder, so this thing is again like everything else on the GCI Traytech is well thought of. So this one locks up, you can undo that, ladder folds down and you can climb up to get anything you want out. Now let's just say you need to get the spare tire out. What do you do? There's a ladder in the way. Well, they thought about that, and this one hinges as well. You undo these. Drop it in the sand. Undo this one. And hey presto, look at that. That one folds down too. You can now get your spare tire out without having to struggle. So tucked in behind the ladder, we've got the shore power. So when you're camped up and you've got mains power, you plug, plug your extension cord into there, charges up all your batteries and runs all the 240 volts straight from mains. So that one's super handy so that you don't go a flat battery in the canopy. Moving to this side, the one spare tire. 
Again, only opted for one spare tire. I, I didn't pop too many tires on our last lap around Australia, so I figured I'd save a bit of weight and only put one on there. All right, so underneath the ladder, we've got our rear drawer. You pop these two open, pull that out. Again, nice stainless steel bench that we can have a party with. Who doesn't want to sit down the beach where we are now, cold beer, standing here, looking at the view. But pop that up on two nice gas struts, and we've got all of our recovery gear in here. Everything fits from the ARB high lift jack to all the air stuff, to straps, axe, tire repair kits, grease gun for the caravan. It all fits in here just nicely. The drawer, we've got another worn winch. So it's another 12,000 pound. The reason why I've got it is if anything happens in the bush and there's another car behind me that's bogged or whatever, being such a big car, I don't really want to turn around in the bush and scratch up my car. So this one, pull it out, pull anything out that I need to, even if it's a caravan that's stuck, unhitch it, hook up the winch and try and pull it out like that. So we are running the Gen Y hitch, four and a half ton, full suspension, takes the shock out of the car and more importantly out of the caravan. So when you go over any nasty bumps, this thing goes up and down and looks after all, all your gear. Let's have a look at this one. So most people don't know what it is, but it's actually the water connection. So it doesn't have your normal tap like everyone else. It's got one of these. So you slide that across, pump this in. Now it's run by a 12 volt pump. So if I turn that on, we've got water for days. Now I've got a 40 litre across the headboard and a 60 litre underneath the tray, giving me another 100 litres. So that's 300 in the caravan and another 100 here. 450 litres of water that we can carry when we're fully loaded. So down here, we've got the ARB compressor. This is the outlet for it. So if we need to pump up any tyres, we don't have to find anything. Plug the air hose straight into there, go around and pump up all your tyres. The Anderson plug, so we've got the red for the sway control of the caravan. You've got the grey for your normal power, and then you've just got your normal 12 pin flat um, that connects to your caravan. It all works well. I don't know why I said it all works well. <laughs> Another great feature is, is the rear LED lights of this canopy. Most canopies just have normal lights, but they've gone to the extra degree of making sure that it's up to the latest technology. The indicators, they float across like the new ones to show which way you're going. Check it out. Pretty cool. Moving on to the passenger side of the canopy. So we'll open up this door and I'll show you what's inside. Again, up the top, all the side protection, the lights, the central locking, same as the other side. But at the back here, I've left this space open to carry my outboard motor for the boat up top. So we're using the LMAC motor slide, houses the motor. No damage gets done to anything. So you start off by pulling it out. And there's your motor. And you lift it up a little bit. Pull this pin out. Motor comes down. We can undo the, the motor holders, pull the outboard off, walk to your boat, put it on, you're away. No mess, no fuss. Put it away, it's the same deal. So it goes back up. Pin goes back in. Slides all the way through. Pin locked back in, motor goes nowhere. We've got a couple of power outlets, a couple of USBs. So that's when uh, we're cooking, we can use that. Moving across to here is the stand-up Bushman fridge. So. This one, where the beers are, the most important thing. So yeah, this one here is my beer fridge or food fridge or whatever, whatever we want to use it for. The reason why we've got this drawer over here next to the fridge, all of our cooking gear goes in there. So when we leave the van and want to do a night out without the van, all of our cooking stuff straight into here. At the moment, it's got a bit, few bits and pieces in there, but first aid kit, it's got the cooktop, and some pots and pans. We just got to fill it up with a bit more cooking gear, but for now, that's the idea. So on here, the stainless steel bench, she rocks out, and we've got the induction cooktop that's stored in here. That, cook, that sits up there, plugs into either power point, and we can cook whatever we want with the battery system that we've got. So works perfect for us when we're not with a van. So underneath all that, we've got the drawers again. So same as the other side, 
pulls out. These are my extension cords and a couple of bigger spanners that I need while we're traveling. Extra tow ball so that I can tow the boat around as well. Moving on to the front one. The suction in these things is ridiculous. Like they are that waterproof that you cannot pull them out sometimes. The air suction in them is that much. But this one just houses some recovery straps, recovery blanket, and, and bits and pieces for uh, getting me out of strife. So up top, the boat's sitting on the LMAC rooftop boat loader. Um, I've gone the LMAC boat loader this time simply because we were supposed to be traveling and I pre-ordered it. I made my own one last time and there is a video on our YouTube channel of a full overview on how I've made it and what I've done and you can get all the hints and tips off that one if you want if you don't want to spend all that money on an LMAC. It's got the winch at the front, pulls the boat up, pulls, pull, pulls the boat down. I don't have to strain my back. I don't have to worry about trying to lift up a heavy boat onto my roof. It does it all with a click of the button. So the boat we're using up top is the CJ Nomad High Side. The reason why we've gone the high side is crocodiles. We're going to be fishing for Barra up north and there are crocodiles around and I want the kids to be safe. So we've gone the higher sides and the thick gunnels. If you have a look, it's not your ordinary tinny, it's got the thick gunnels. We've got stubby holders built in, we've got fishing rod holders built in and they're all flush mounted so that it still can roll along the LMAC boat loader with no issues. The engine that I'm putting on it is a two stroke 15 Yami. Now, the reason why I went that is because I had my 200 series before and I had nowhere to store my engine other than laying it down. When you lay down a four stroke, the oil pours out. So I've gone the two stroke so I could lay it down. Now, I might even look at upgrading it to a four stroke 20 horsepower because this boat can handle it. <laughs> All right, so above the cab, I've got the uh, four Max Tracks with the Max Tracks shovel holder slash Max Tracks board holder. The position of it, I'm not 100% certain. It covers up one of my lights that I've put up there and I'm looking for ideas. So if you've got ideas of where and how I can store my Max Tracks a little bit better, drop it in the comments and I'd love to hear your opinion on it. So let us know and see if we can make some changes to make it better. So on this truck, we've done the same as the 200. Love the King suspension on the 200. Going to put it again on the, on the F350. So fully adjustable, remote reservoir, king suspension, coil over conversion. So most trucks come along with the, the spring on its own, shocky at the back. This one's incorporated with the, sh the shocky and the spring all in one. They say it's more comfortable. I never rode the last one, so we'll see what it's like on this one. But it's a four inch lift, super lift, do the, do the lift from America, change out the radius arms, change out all of that sort of stuff and the rear which we'll move to next. So to help with the ride of the front suspension, we've also done the steering dampeners. Now again, I wanted the King's steering dampeners, but unfortunately they didn't have any in stock. With everything that's going on in the world at the moment, stock's a big issue. So what we've done is put the Bilstein sho um, shocks in there and they've got the same mount as the King. So when Kings get them in, potentially might swap them over. So on the rear, we have the fully adjustable remote reservoir shocks again. Um, they're tucked in underneath and these are the F350 leaf springs. The F350 comes with leaf springs because it is a truck at the end of the day and these have been upgraded again to 2400 kilos to carry the weight of the canopy, the boat and water with the caravan as well. So all that weight needs heavy springs. To complement them we've got the Airbag Man airbags, fully wireless, we've got a remote control that pumps them up and lets them down. Now somebody along the way in the wharf actually stole my PSI reading, so I need to get a new one of those wireless controllers and whack that in so I can see how much PSI I've got in each airbag. But having it wireless, I don't have to get out and pump it up like I did with the 200. You can just push a button and see what it's like. All right guys, so the interior of the truck, it's, um, it's pretty basic, there's not much to it. We've got the GME two-way sitting just here. Easy accessible, nice and easy. We've got the Switch Pro Switch powered up with an app on your phone. So if I get anywhere within Bluetooth range, I can click onto that app, load it up, and I can turn every single light on in this car whenever I want, whether it's the rooftop light bar, the front light bar, the side lights, the reverse lights, everything will work. Running the HEMA HX1 um, Navigator, we go to a lot of places that we don't know where the hell we're going. 
and that just reassures me that I know how to get the hell out of there as well. A couple of things that we want to do is obviously tint the windows and keep it nice and cool in here being a black truck and maybe some iPad holders. If you've got any good ideas of what can um, hold these iPads up for the kids, drop it in the comments. Love to hear what you've got. Basically, that's, that's it for the interior. Let's go. Here we go. All right, guys, that's a wrap up of the truck. So it's been a long journey, but I finally got my dream truck. <laughs> We're done with the introductions of the house and the car. House. <laughs> it's a fucking paravan. <laughs> <It's... laughs> right, let's go. It's been a long journey. No. <laughs> it's been a long journey, but I finally got my dream truck. We've done with the introductions. You've seen the caravan. You've seen the car. Come with us as we start lapping the island. If you like it, subscribe, like, comment. You know that's what to do. See you on the next one.